My name is Monica Gleberman, and you're listening to Silence On Set Podcast. On today's podcast, we're talking to Molly Hagen, who plays Abilene Walker on the CW hit show Walker. This season, Cordell is taken and held captive by an anarchist group who's determined to break him. Walker must face a painful memory from his past he's never shared with anyone and team up with an unexpected ally if he wants to get out alive. So to talk about the season, Grey Flag, the shocking twist in the end, and what we could expect in the final two episodes, here's Molly Hagen. So like I said before, I'm so excited to have you on. We've talked in the past, but I love you so much. So I'm so happy to have you join us in this whole Walker family of uh, me interviewing everybody related to Walker. <laughs> so so nice to join. I'd like to have you join us. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I, I love the show. So I'm excited to be here. Well, I am. I could not be happier. So I want to kind of start right in with it. I love Abilene, obviously. I wanted to know for you, when you got the script originally and um, kind of described maybe like pinpoints, a little breakdown, character breakdown of her probably, like, you know, like whatever information they gave gave you. Did you build a backstory in your mind as to why she would have chosen a ranch life and marrying a rancher and kind of living the lifestyle that we see her in, in the pilot and then moving forward? No, um, the technique I use isn't so much about backstory. It's about whatever given circumstances I'm, I see, like, I, I'm sure I got a script. Um, so, uh, so I, I, I really use the given circumstances of, of the script and what's, what's known and then build from there. Rather than in my own head, like, well, maybe this happened to make this happen or whatever. And it's more about belief building about like what what are Abilene's beliefs, which is sort of a faster way in than building a backstory that may feel like bullshit to me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's how. Cool. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. uh, so, I'm always fascinated with that because actors have such a different process. So for you. And it's easier for you to go, I don't want to, I don't need to create something that might not have existed. I want to start with where she is and take the parts that they're giving me and make that into her. So that's kind yeah. of. Yeah. And, and when I read it, when I first read it, I was like, oh, I know her. I mean, I just felt really strongly about this. And I'm like, I'm getting this motherfucking role. What made you feel so strong when you read it? Was it because I know that you, um, you know, grew out West, right? Like, so I know that you've grown like, so was there a connection there? Well, like, what was it where you read it and you were like, yes, I am playing her and I will do whatever I have to do <laughs> to get this role because she is me and I am her kind of thing. Well, I'm from the Midwest um, and I just was like, this is my mom. This is my mom. And I went, and I want to get this for my mom. And I don't know. I just, uh, and my mom's passed. But I mean, I just, I don't know. I felt, a, I, I, uh, I don't know. Were there certain, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, that's a fine answer. No, were there certain qualities though about her? Like, were there things that like stuck out? And she you was like, strong. Okay. The, she was strong. She, there weren't a lot of scenes with her, but she was strong. She talk to um uh my son's name not Jared Cordell. Um, Cordell. Cordell. Yeah. I'll check you out I got it don't worry I've been talking to everybody yeah, I like, like uh, don't worry about it she she talked to Cordell obliquely like came at it from that's what my mom used to do like my mom um, birth control pills in in um my uh dresser drawer and um and it, she wasn't snooping i had asked her mom can you look for this thing and i had forgotten they were there whatever 
And so my mom liked to play solitaire and I was doing the dishes and she was in the background playing solitaire. And I was like angry about something and just like, ah. and my mom was playing solitaire. And she said, well, you know, Molly, I hear that birth control can change your moods. So instead of say, you know, uh, you know, saying, oh my God, you're having, why do you have birth control or why you're having sex or whatever? It was just very, you know, calmly. And she, so she came at it from, and I went, ah, this is my mom. I don't know. There was just something about it, but I'll never forget that. And I just, <laughs> it's like doing the dishes. I hear that. And I, and I was, in my teens. I mean, I wasn't like off in college and at birth control. I was in my teens. Yeah. So, and it was in the seventies. So that I had birth control was a kind of a big deal. And that I was having sex was kind of a big deal. So, um, so but I just remember like looking up because we had a window right out. I'm looking up and going, Oh my God, she knows everything. And then I went, no, mom, that's ridiculous. I mean, I like to, I like even got more explosive <laughs> and just like, and we never talked about it again. Your whole life. You never brought it up as like a funny, like conversation down the road. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Later on. Okay. May, may, maybe. But yeah, so she, she never really talked is, about it. So she really is like an Abilene that really does describe her. Like just, I, I love yeah. that though. Um, like addressing it without addressing it. And that's what Abilene does. Yes. Like making a comment where you're like, wait, that doesn't make sense. Oh, I know what she means. And and like all of them do. So it's like, if she makes a comment to Cordell, her husband, Liam, it's not a direct comment. It might not be like, get out of the house because it's muddy, but it will be like, right. there's dirt all over the floor. I mean, that's ridiculous. And then she walks off and you're like, oh, I did that. I got to clean it. I got to get out of the house. <laughs> that's kind of how she right. makes her like around... So that's interesting that like um you related to her kind of on your mom's level and then wanted to play her. So like and that makes yeah. a lot of sense though to to do that. Yeah. So when you start working and you're getting the scripts, how has she and I've kind of asked everybody this, but how has she changed from like when you read her in script one, like your first script, through to um, you know, the two parter just aired, right? So through to the the end of um the season I guess or close to the end of the season how has she evolved and changed over time or how has your vision of her changed over time um I well I mean I feel like she's not as oblique as she used to be <laughs> I mean I, I think she comes at things more directly now um uh you know, one of the things that I struggle with is that how much crap has happened to this family and how much fear she has to internalize about her sons and her husband. I'm like, what what happened to, you know, Bottom's cancer? I mean, it's, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's just like a lot of stuff and which also reminds me of my mom and she just keeps moving forward but I, I, like at some point is she gonna break I mean she had the stroke I guess that's kind of breaking right but it's just like so the scene where I get to talk to um Kobe and talk to Larry talk to Captain um <laughs> and say uh you know what are the chances that I can convince him to you know not be a, a ranger anymore and we sort of laugh, but I mean, that's not a joke to me. I'm like, I, I, as this character would move heaven and earth for him not to be a ranger. Mm -hmm. It's too much. I'm done. I'm, I'm like, a part of me is done. Like every time I go to work, I'm like, oh my God, I, I, I I'm going to kidnap him. I'm going to kidnap him. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make him stay. I mean, I can't, I don't know how parents do this. I mean, and this is a fictitious for me and I can't handle it. So I I don't, it's one of the reasons why I didn't have children. It was like, I, they would be in a bubble. I would have a bubble boy. I would, I, they would never go anywhere. They would never, they would never grow. They'd never learn because I would, you know, hold, hold them up in my house for fear of anything happening to them. And I just can't take it. And now things are happening. I mean, it's just awful. And like he, I mean, 
I haven't even, we haven't even begun to deal with like my PTSD about their, and luckily there have been some episodes that I have not been in that sort of deal with that stuff. And I was frankly grateful. So I don't want to go through this. Well, yeah, it's very emotional. And, you know, I was saying this to like some of the other cast members, things happen so much in every episode that first of all, yeah, if it, if Cordell was my son, we'd be done. <laughs> like I, I, I'd be like, I can't. I'm done. You've been you've been taken. There's been guns. There's been a shootout on my property. Like I've lost my house. I got my house back. Like I'm I'm good. We're good. I'm done. Let's move on. Retire. We'll do something else. Um, be a detective. Like <laughs> something less dramatic. Um, so I, I totally understand. And and I'm always like laughing because, um, you know, an episode will start and I go, oh, this might just be like a fun, like Thanksgiving. This might just be like a fun Thanksgiving episode. And then I'm like, shame on me for like assuming the Walker family would just have like a nice Thanksgiving. Like that was my bad. Nice Thanksgiving episode that turns into a, like a whole, you know, shit show with like a tree falling in the window and you got like, you know, Kevin going around your house and like, I mean, it was just, it was chaos. It was just so crazy. So I I think it's so interesting because I love that it shows Rangers and the way that it shows how much that they sacrifice, right? How much families sacrifice and how much they sacrifice for their families and what they do and all of those things. Obviously it's dramatized. So the drama part right. of it, I'm like, oh my God, this family. So yeah, I would have been like, Cordell, you're done. I'm done. I'm your mother. I can't even do this anymore. <laughs> We're finished. But, and, and it's also interesting too, you brought it up that there's so much, and I wonder if this will, and I'm hoping for a renewal and all that, that this will come up next season. There's so much that hasn't been processed. I feel like fully like Cordell, I think has a really great way of compartmentalizing maybe because of the job. And like, he kind of turns things off. I do think it affects him later. And then we see that come out. But like for, you know, Liam getting, you know, him going through his stuff and now they have the horse, but like the, the horse rescue, but he still is going through his stuff. And then you have like Stella right. and you have like August and all the stuff they've been through. And even like when they went hiking, you know, and like all those, these things start adding up in your brain is like things that have happened to you throughout you know for no reason of your own it's because your dad is risking his life and it's kind of like the fallout right and then like your character Evelyn, she has a stroke there like i said there was a like a shootout at her house i mean like there's just so many things that have happened you've had the thanksgiving like crazy episode you've had um like poor like bottom who's like always walking around i i feel if anything though bottom's like the safest one Mitch does such a good job because I feel like if the apocalypse was happening, like, and no supernatural joke on it, but if the apocalypse was happening, I want Bottom and or Cordell because the two of them always seem to find a gun, a knife, something to throw at somebody. It hits them. They're good. They're out. I feel safe. I feel good. So I feel like that's, I feel like you have that going for you or like for Aveline. Like, at least she has that as some sort of yes. try to balance out the crazy drama on the show. <laughs> Is the, is the yeah i feel i i feel that yeah i feel like she feels pretty protected with bottom around yeah 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 i mean yeah that's but still like a lot. you know maybe cordell should have moved out because if cordell moves out maybe no more crap is gonna happen at my house i know your beautiful house oh my gosh <laughs> It's not uh, like we were surveilled. We had cameras everywhere. People were watching us all the time. I mean. I know. I don't even know how. So th this is like a great question to ask you. So as an actress, right? Or an actor, when you're doing this, right? It makes sense. You get, you're getting the scripts. It's dramatized. You're following the story. <coughs> oh, that makes sense. You're rationalizing it. You're doing what you need to do. As like a human being, <laughs> when right. you're doing these things and you're going, okay. I need to make this make sense in my mind. This needs to be believable. This doesn't, this can't be crazy, crazy, right? It can't be like completely outrageous because then it wouldn't, we wouldn't buy it as the viewers, right? But it has to be outrageous enough where your responses make sense. Like this is crazy, what's going on? So how do you rationalize that balance between like showing Abilene where she's responding 
properly to the things that are going on, but not to an extent where it's like over the top and campy and like too court, you know, where we're all going, okay, now we're taken out of the show because it's just so much. So how do you balance right. that, that line between keeping her so grounded, but showing also like, this is not normal. Like this is not a normal scenario she's living in. Well, I, I look at the circumstances as real as like, okay, this is happening to me. And, you know, a lot of, you know, we, we go through our, our real lives thinking that stuff is insane. It's like, I can't believe this happened. I mean, so if it seems, you know, like, I, I mean, it's, that's where I start. It's like, I can't believe this is happening. I, I can't, I, I can't, I mean, so much is so much of our own lives are about denial, uh, not understanding, uh, and, you know, I, I think, I don't know. I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> I, like, I don't, I accept the circumstances that they write. You and, I, I, and, and process them in a way that I guess, I guess, you know, like, it seems like your process is like, if they give it to you and it makes sense to you and you process it and you live in the moment in that freedom, that seems to be, yeah. is, is what seems on me. And this is me talking. I mean, it's, I, my observation of you is that you live in that freedom and then that's what comes out on screen. And so you live in that exactly just completely free. And I'm just going with what's happening in this moment. And this is how like she would respond in this moment, given obviously you have lines and things like that, but like given all of that, this makes sense currently moment to moment. Right. And as long as I do the work at home about like really steep myself in the circumstances, really steep myself in that. So I can show up to work to play. Because if I'm thinking about all that stuff, the brain's amazing how much it can, how it will accept things. I mean, if I really, you know, spin on, you know, my, my son going to work and he's probably going to, you know, or he's lost or like he's been, whatever the horrible thing that happens to Cordell. I mean, as long as I spin on that and, and really... It, it, just follow where my brain would go uh and i show up to work having done that work then i can play if i wait to show up to work and go oh sh what am i supposed to be that you know then it's too late and right. then i'm not playing and, I go, and it's not like i'm i have to do the work yes there have been times i haven't and my experience isn't very good <laughs> And I feel like crap about myself and I feel like crap about the scene. And I feel like I wasn't in the moment. And I'm like, it's not like every time I show up to the set, I'm like present. It's, it's my desire is to be, that's what I want. I want to play. I want to be, I, I want to do what you just described all the time. And then I have a really great time. Sometimes I don't, and then I feel like crap about myself, and then I go home. And I'm like, ah, you know. And it's it's so funny you should say that because I feel after not only after interviewing almost everybody, I think I have one person left after interviewing almost everybody on all three shows: Winchester's, Walker, Walker Independence. I feel like if anything, your character is one of the ones where I watch very like critically, right? Like I'm not watching like the average viewer. Like I feel like you know I'm always like picking things out. I feel like out of all the characters, you live in the most freedom. And and because of your character and because of your acting, it led me to ask every single person related to this show in particular, how much freedom are you given? Because that and that all spawned from you because I was going, it just seems like she's so present. She's so like, and it almost feels like it's not scripted, even though it's scripted. And I know they can improvise a little bit, but, and I was just so like enamored with how you were doing things that I started asking everyone. Like I literally, I was like, Kale, Kobe, like I was Jeff, like, do you, are you given freedom? Can you change the lines? Can you do this? Can you do that? And it was all spawned from the way that you portray her because I feel that. So you might not like, there might be days where you go home and you're oh. like, oh, scene was like awful. Like, I don't feel good about it, but I don't see that. Like, I've never seen a scene where I was like, Ooh, she was off that day. Like, no, they all seem to come out where there's just this free, 
I don't know how to explain it. It's like a free spirit. Like there's just this freedom and an ease to her that just comes out. And that's from you. I mean, that you caused that to happen. So that caused me. So anyone listening to all the podcasts that came out before this, and I have more that are coming out, will hear me ask that question about freedom. And that all spawned from your character and from the way that you act her. Wow. Because I just feel like well, that's it shows. That's a huge compliment. That's huge. That's that's the best compliment I've ever had in my life. Oh, well, I'm glad Thanks. it was 100% true. And it literally spawned. So I, I'll have to send you the links. But if you listen, well, you you might not want to hear everyone's because we went really long, but I'll have to maybe like cut little clips where I <laughs> ask every single person about the freedom. I'm like, so what about freedom? How much freedom do you have? Like I asked everybody and it was literally all because of your character because I, I just felt, I don't know, like I you just do, like you just act her in such a great, just honest, beautiful, pure place and a lot of times that's well not- i gotta say anna i mean anna created this character so uh freaky um she writes really well and she wrote this role really well i mean she it's her voice is this is abilene and so she's got a lot of dimension to her and that's all anna I mean, yes, other people have written scripts, but she sort of created her and um, it's it's all Anna. I mean, and and the freedom that we feel on set is due to Anna and, and Jared. Um, and which is too, you know, but I try not to change lines. I try to do what's scripted. Um, if I inadvertently change a line, uh, it's it's not necessarily intentional. Um, but if I, if there are any, if I have any problems or hiccups, I try to do that and have that, those conversations with Anna before the day. Right. And, you know, and there's been very few things, you know, it's so funny because every, no, every single person has said that as well. What, what did Jared create that made everybody feel, and I know you guys, like you've worked together before. I mean, obviously like Mitch has worked with him before. Um, like, um, I mean, there's, there's quite a group. I feel bad for Jake, right? I, I, I was joking with everybody that for Jake, I was like, he's going to turn bad at some point. So, I mean, I'm supernatural. I mean, come on. Like there was, there was a moment like where he was, you know, he momentarily had a good moment, but he has that face where like, you can't tell. So like, I just had an idea when he came on the show, but I, I was kind of joking about it, but with Jared working with a lot of these people, what causes that feeling so like do you was there a conversation or is it just the way he's doing things on set because he's he's an ep he's acting on it so like what makes everyone feel that comfortable and that vulnerability and the and the ability to be able and anna does it the ability to be able to go talk to her and say listen i don't know if my character would have said this can we do this and and to be open to ideas so how did that start um he said something in the beginning of shooting. He said, best idea wins. He said that the first day on set. And I hadn't worked with any of these people before. I hadn't worked with Jared. I hadn't worked with Mitch. I had met Mitch once. He doesn't remember. Um, <laughs> we'll have to yell at him. And I later. <laughs> him going, oh, um, so he said up front, best idea wins. Um, conversation was encouraged. Uh, it just, I don't, he's, he's just a very collaborative person. And, you know, the crew has a, a, a lot to do with energy on a set. And I don't know, it's, it, and it's not even, it's not like, oh, they're actors and they're collaborative. It's like the crew's collaborative too. So they're, they talk amongst themselves about the right ways to do things. There's, there's, you know, I, I think Monk even suggested something to me. Someone suggested something to me. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. I don't know. It's, it's a real family where there's not this hierarchy of, uh, you know, there's nothing's precious. And there's not this high, I mean, obviously Jared's the boss, but, but it it doesn't feel like a hierarchy of 
of you're less than, so you better shut up. Yeah, it's not like he's walking. I mean, listen, he could be joking because that sounds like Jared, but it's not like he's walking around with a boss hat on. <laughs> he's walking no. around no. like, just saying, hey, what, what is what is everyone thinking? Or if you guys maybe, uh, I've heard this too, where you'll be doing a scene, all of you together, he's in the scene and something's not working. And then, like you said, everybody kind of chimes in. So it's like the director might have an idea. The PA might have an idea. The boomer might have an idea. An actor might have an idea. And it's like, what? and then if they switch it and it works, like you kind of said, it's in. And that's what made it. And that was the change that was needed. So that kind of seems to be yeah. like the thing. And it hasn't changed at all since season one, all the way through. And if any, and from what I've heard, if anything, it's gotten better because you guys all know each other more, feel comfortable with each other more. And so it's just increased this, kind of crazy not normal set life because you know when people hear this and i think when they they know jared and jensen obviously from supernatural that's like the big thing right but and for supernatural i think that set the tone that was a set that they were younger on that's what they kind of were told and learned from and they seem to be spreading it to their shows but people don't that's realize true. um and you know you know this probably more than me but that that's so abnormal. I mean, like I've been on sets where I've seen directors screaming and I've seen people go like, just say your lines and leave and like call it a day. Like, we don't care about your opinion. You're getting paid to like do your thing and go home. So that's why I always like try to bring it up to emphasize that it's so not normal for that to happen. So for it to, so for someone to- Well, the other thing is too, it's like you are going to get the best work out of people if they feel safe. Right. And it's a very safe environment. So if someone is uptight or is nervous or whatever, anything we can do to dispel that is going to make everyone better. It's one of the things that I thought Jane the Virgin did really well is, um, first of all, they were very welcoming of people, you know, you know, they meet you and they hug you, they whatever. And it was such an inclusive environment and a safe environment. And I think that's one of the reasons why Jane the Virgin was so, you just didn't feel nervous on the set. And when you're nervous, you, it's, it's, you don't do your best work. And the thing about Jared that like Jared can play, mm -hmm. but he also will do the work. He comes to work he, he wants to play in a scene. He he wants to find out how the scene goes by playing it, to play. Right. He knows that this job is, it's make-believe. It's, and if, if make-believe is, uh, like make-believe requires a certain amount of uh, freedom and comfortability and, you know, like kids, when they, when they make-believe, there's, there's, they're not nervous about, making believe you know so uh, i i think jared brings that non-preciousness he desperately cares about what we're doing it's not about care it's about approach and he often says you know this isn't brain surgery and i think the more precious you feel about your stuff or the i mean i think what i do is really important it's important for me to feel that way it's not important for me to have others feel that way. It's important to me. It's important for Jared. It's important for each of these actors on the set and it's important to the crew, but we're not precious about it. I think what I do is really important. I don't think people should treat me that way. Do you know what I mean? It's important that I feel that way, not that anyone else feels that way about me. Like you're not trying to like, show anyone else off it's like what's important to you and then that shows and jared holds the same esteem for him and that shows and cal holds the same for him and that shows. and so by all of you making it so important for yourself that collective intent turns into what ends up being this great amazing show that works because you guys all yeah. have intent behind it <coughs> to make the best show that we can make regardless of what decision comes in, as long as I feel like I'm doing the best and I'm doing the work that I should be doing, whatever that is for you, that works, whatever yeah. that is for Kel that works, whatever that is for Kobe that will like, and so on. And that seems to 
and it's working. I mean, obviously, obviously it's working, but that seems to be the way that you guys are able to maintain it because I feel like a lot of times people will say that, like they'll go, yeah, the first day of set, everybody was like, yeah, do whatever you want. And then like, as the years go on, it's like that kind of dissipates. And in this particular right. It was the opposite. It was like, as time went on, it was like more freedom, more safety, more inclusion, more, you know, like more ways of being yourself, more ways of being able to talk about your character. If you do feel uncomfortable about something, just more ways of being involved, less of a show up and be an actor and more of a show up and let's make this the best that it can be kind of. Yeah. And the crew's really a part of that. I mean, I have there've been great crews. I've worked with great crews, but this crew, for some reason, there's a, there's an ownership they have of this show and a care that I, they're not just showing up to do a job. I don't know. It's really special. I mean, I, it's really hard to describe. I know I need to, I was joking with Kale. I need to come down there. Cause Kale told me, so I, you're set. I haven't visited yet. And I've said this in most, I'm manifesting this. So I'm going to have to manifest it to Jared. Um, Cause I've told every single person, cause they were like, how come you haven't come down? Cause yours is the only set. I'm like, I don't know. Like, I, I guess it just didn't come in. I guess maybe with coat. I don't know. So I'm like, I have to come down there. So when I was talking to Kale, he went, he told me he's going to kill me. Well, I mean, it's in this, it's in the interview. He um <laughs> just got his driver's license and I was like, oh, like, is it fun? Like are boys being boys? Are you guys like, you know, jumping on horses and jumping on four wheelers? Cause that was in an episode. And so Kale's like, no, they don't really let me do that much stuff. He's like, I just got my license. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is what we'll do. If I could come down to set, I will rent a. I obviously I'll have to rent a car. So I was like, I'll rent a car, and you can. I'll drive it up to like the ranch, and you could just drive around. I'm like, have a good time. Like I'll sit next to you. Like you know, I have my license, and like I'll, I'll show you. So he was like, oh my god, that'd be so awesome. So I mentioned this to <laughs> Jeff because I'm like, yeah, like I, I really want to come down. So Jeff's like, just make sure you get like the extra insurance, like on the car, like get the <laughs> car insurance and your insurance. And I was like, okay. <laughs> He's like, get the extra insurance. And I was like, no, I, I will. But it was so cute because he was just saying like boys are boys. So I'm interested in that aspect too, because you're like the mate, like you're like Abilene's like the matriarch. You're kind of like the matriarch. I mean, you're a strong, powerful woman on this, on this set. And you're with a bunch of knucklehead boys playing around with like horses and tools and four wheelers and things like that. So how does like that all, like when they're playing or like, you know, there's resets going on and you guys have some downtime and you see them all, you know, racing. Jeff was telling me, like, he's like, I swear Jared cheated when they were talking about the, the running constantly where they had to keep filming that over and over. And he was like, I swear. He's like, he just disappeared. And then he appeared at the end. And I'm like, did like, so I was like, is there a conspiracy? Did he get picked up and like dropped off? And he was like, I swear I was sweating. He wasn't. So like, you know, there's been all these like jokes between all these guys, you know, about all like kind of the shenanigans that they're doing. And then for the four wheelers, I'm like, did you guys have fun? Like, did y'all race them and like, you know, really have a good time. And so I just heard like, they're all just having like a great time again off, you know, when they're not working and they don't have to like focus on certain things. So for you, is it hard sometimes to like wrangle them all up or are you kind of like, I'm hopping on that too. And are you like racing off with them or are you just kind of like, Oh, no. boys, what am I going to do? Of, first of all, I'm not in those scenes. Thankfully. I think <laughs> Anna knows that I have a terror of all things that I can't, I'm not ambulatory. If I can't walk myself, like I'm not getting on a four wheeler. I'm not, you know, I've been on a horse once. Um, and that was a lot. Um, I would like to get better at that. Not that I have to do it on camera. I'd like to get better off camera before. Um, uh, they, they don't put me in those scenes and I'm grateful for it. Um, yes, there's a lot of testosterone. I mean, look at him. Listen, look I know. Jeff. Well, that's what I was saying. I was like, Jeff, Jeff like... Keegan, and Cardell. And I mean, and, and Jared. I mean, it's crazy. And also Mitch. And I don't know what I'm allowed to say and not allowed to say, so maybe I won't say it. But, you know, the four-wheeler thing. Well, there was I, a thing. I heard, I heard they had a good time, is what I heard. <laughs> they had a good time until good time. Uh, they didn't. Yes, I, I heard. I heard a little bit about this. They had a good time until one didn't one crash or so, or like 
flipped. Or flipped. Or- yeah, yeah. It was like I was like it crashed or flipped or something that one of them had said. That um, and they were okay though, right? Like I, they, I know someone told me this yeah. story that they were all, and I was like, you guys, this is why I was like, this is why women don't do this. I'm like, because like I would be like you, like I'd be like, go have fun, guys. <laughs> I'm good. Like if I was on set, I'd be like, have a good time. I'm gonna stay here. Like I'll pet the horses. I'll hang out with animals. Oh, I, I, I won't even pick the horses. I'm scared to pick the horses. Oh Are you God. kidding? I'm like, every time I pick a horse, I'm like, oh, you just, just like the oh horses. my gosh. I to gird my loins every time there's a horse in, on a set. It's so sad. It's oh my so God. Sad. Molly. Okay. So this is my other thing now. So when I eventually, again, I manifest this, I have to text them. But when I come to set, we will have to have like a kumbaya with you and a horse. We'll have to like, we'll ha- I'll do that for you. I'll have Kale drive me around and hopefully I won't die. I will have, I told Jeff, like, you know, he's hopping on horses and stuff. So I was like, I want to see that in person because he was hopping from the floor, jumping on a horse. Um, So I've been telling everybody. So for you, we will have to have like a kumbaya. I'll give you a carrot. We'll, we'll, we'll have like a whole, a whole horse moment so that you're not so scared of the horses. Because there's there's such beautiful animals. We'll work. We'll figure it out. We'll get. We'll work it out for you. If you're that, if you're really scared, you can stand back and I'll feed it for you. And then I'll just I'll talk. I'll talk to the horse. I'll just be like, she likes you. She really does. I promise. And it will it, it will warm up to you. <laughs> but so you're like a two um, feet on the ground girl. I got it. No, it makes sense. I yeah. got. It. But yeah, they're like they're they're wild. But it's so interesting to hear all their stories. All of them. I mean, Mitch is in there. Him. He is. Oh, I, know. I heard some like yeah, I've heard crazy stories. So I mean, like even, like like I said, the racing stuff. Um, you know, and Jeff was kind of joking around that it was nonstop, and they were really running, and they were really filming that over and over again. And and then I was like, well, what's going on like in between? Like when you guys are like you know not running or like not doing that. And he's like, oh shenanigans. He's like, we're making fun of each other. We're, we're doing this. We're doing that. We have a group chat. So I brought up the infamous group chat because everybody's a part of this group chat. And I had asked, I think Jeff at the time. And then later I had Colby after, but I said to Jeff, I said, listen, I don't want to, um, you know, intrude. You could say no, but what was like the last thing you guys talked about in the group chat? Like, if you don't mind. So he's like, let me say, so he like pulls up his phone. He's like scrolling through. So he starts describing some of the stuff in there. And then he goes, Oh gosh, you're going to, he's like, you're going to start laughing. Cause he told me a whole story about how Liam got them like into watches. So oh. he was like, um, I said, Liam Keegan, now you got me doing Keegan got the, oh, no, Liam, uh, no Keegan. Oh my gosh. No, oh, Keegan. Keegan got them into <laughs> Keegan. watches. I mean, Keegan was like, I guess Keegan and Jared are like experts. And then somehow Jeff was like, I got pulled into this. And now I'm like intrigued into what, and I said, well, you know, I saw on, um, Keegan's Instagram that he was posting some videos of watches and my dad loves watches. I know nothing. So he's like naming off all these numbers and I don't know. And like, and like, they look pretty and cool. And then I look them up and I'm like, like when I saw the prices, I was like, no, I'll just go get him like a cheap watch that looks nice. (laughs) Keegan will kill me for that. But like, but it was just so funny. So he goes, yeah. So our last text message was a photo of Jared and it's like cut off, but he's wearing a watch. And it was like, I see it on the right hand. And like, and then they were all joking about the watch. And I, and then I said, did anyone answer that other than the three of you idiots that are talking about watches? And he goes, no, <laughs> he was like, no one gives a damn about what we put in that chat about the watches. He's like, they'll all just ignore it. And then just keep talking. <laughs> so I should have put an emoji of me sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> well Kobe said he was like I'm big with like the gifs he was like I'm big with like putting in like little thing and I oh was, yeah he's yeah he like yeah he was like I'm big with that. I was like did you respond and he was like no <laughs> so I was like did anyone respond I was like so is it just dead right now and then he said no like now we're talking about he's like you know photos are up and this and that and then he started talking about stuff so um in that group chat are you also kind of like oh my gosh what are they all talking about now what is what is going on well, sometimes, you know, I'll make a joke and that's, I don't know, sometimes I'll make a joke and uh, and no one responds and I'm like, oh no, they all hate me. I mean, you know, and then finally Jared will come around and like, ha 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 or whatever. And I'm like, oh, thank God. All right. It's like sometimes people put things out there and there's no response. So you're, you're like, 
<laughs> but uh, no, it's pretty freewheeling. And, and then there's special interests. So like Kale and Keegan have their own language that I, I don't, it's too young for me. So I don't know it. I mean, I'm tired of asking, what does that mean? Sometimes I Google it. I'm like, oh, that's what that means. But a lot of times I'm like, oh, they're young. I don't care. <laughs> they can scroll, scroll, scroll. <laughs> Kobe usually always makes me laugh. Jared usually always, but Kelby's really funny. Kelby's really funny. I like. And I, he's so. He dry. was very funny when we when we spoke. He was very funny, and I was like, I need it on this chat. So I was like, what's going on in there? But it's so funny because you all jump around. So like everybody's like talking about like kind of different things, and like you all come together and respond. So it's just so funny. So uh, because I told Kobe, I'm like, they were talking about watches. So then he was like, I I don't even think I replied or like maybe a GIF or something. And then he started scrolling through, and then I think you guys were on like, um like a birthday party like it was um jared's like daughter's birthday and there were photos in there so he was like scrolling through that and so it was, just, it was just very funny and i was like are you guys like all responding he's like there's a lot of emojis he's like i think people just like you know some of us just don't care <laughs> and like and but like in a funny way he was like but we ju we just don't care so like we'll post like cute emojis and like little responses and and then we get on like another topic and then it like goes on so i was like that's so nice though in between filming at least because sometimes like you're yeah. done, it's another thing. And the reason I bring it up is because that's another thing that's special about you guys, because a lot of times you leave set, you're on break. You guys don't really, I mean, it's not that nobody talks to one another, but it's like, you you know, you have a life and things happen. And then you, it's like camp kind of like you have your like little three month break and then you come back to camp and it's like, you never left, but instead you're now you're haunted with these, with this group message that keeps you guys talking the whole time. Um, and in communication, but I love it. Cause it seems like you guys all kind of get a kick out of it and, you know, talk to each other, but, um, it was funny. Kobe did, um, Mitch's voice, which was very funny. He did like an imitation of him. So I was like, I was like, does Mitch like respond? Cause I feel like Mitch would like not really be invested in like watches and like random photos and gifs coming in and, and Kobe did oh, like, no, he's no, Mitch is very responsive, but no, he doesn't care about watches. But I mean, <laughs> Mitch is usually responsive, and <laughs> Mitch always makes me laugh. <laughs> he he so usually funny. puts things in that are pretty funny. Well, it was just it was funny because he like did his voice, and like I can't do it, but like he did like a really good imitation of him, and then he and then he was just like like God damn it, like that kind of thing, and, like was kind of like making oh hell, yeah, uh, and it was just so funny and. Um, so I was just like, oh man, I was like, what's going on in this chat? I would just love to, love to see all that. But I, I just find enjoyment in it that you guys are all still communicating in during break. And again, something that's not normal. So like for people that are like, I feel like people have learned like so much throughout me interviewing all three of these casts because I've explained like letters of intent and what renewals mean. Cause everyone keeps asking me about renewals and things going on. And we've been kind of explaining just like the process of what it's like to be an actor and various things like that. And I just keep reiterating, like these three sets are not normal. It is not normal to have a group chat. It right. is not normal to have this kind of freedom. And it's not normal for certain things that are going on. So I had to bring up the chat because I brought it up to everybody about it. But um, so what is your go-to for the, for the chat? I would feel like you too, by the way, I would feel like super, I'm very, I'm very outgoing, but I feel like in a, in a chat setting, I get like, shy so i feel like if i posted something and no like just like you if nobody responded right away i would be like <laughs> and like my heart would be going because i'd be like maybe i shouldn't have said something maybe i should take it out should i say something else should i make it worse i was like i dig myself like in a great you're right should i make it worse like, yeah i like, usually i usually let it go for i don't know an hour if no one's responded and then i'm like i'll i'll say something like, <laughs> like i'll either crickets or, is this not funny uh, do people hate me? I mean, uh, I I can't let it go. I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much. We would be the, exactly the same. I, you know what would probably happen is if I was in that chat and I and I texted something and nobody responded, I would message you and be like, "What should I do?" <laughs> you can't decide. And you would. Oh no, I do that with Mitch a lot. I I mean, I mean, like I'm I'm like, was this not funny? I know I'll text Mitch. I'll text whoever I think is going to respond, but usually it'll be Mitch. Because well, Mitch and I become really good friends. Well, that and that leads me in a good segue, because that leads me into how did you make, and to kind of like jump back to the show, because 
it's so hard because the show is so fun and there's so much freedom. So I feel like the injury, my injuries always go kind of a little up and down with it because there's so much going on and you guys are so fascinating. But I love the relationship that has been built between Mr. And I wanted to always say this and Mrs. Walker. So yeah. for, for you, I always want to be like, I want to have her on. I have to be like Mrs. Walker. Cause it's just, you just hear it on the show all the time. Like it's just, I just love it. Or like Miss Walker. But um, I feel like you and Mitch, I don't know what you did. Uh, I don't know if it was like natural. I don't know if it was just, it's acting and then it forms into something, but there's such a beautiful relationship between the two of you. And you guys are like these pillars and that's how I view it on the show. Like these two really strong pillars that will do everything and anything for their kids, no matter what it like the costs are, including in the last episode, you know, in part two, I think of 13 like is Mitch when, killing a lot of people <laughs> when he's like holding a gun and, and like, by the way, first of all, can I just say for the record, Mitch is a, <clears throat> he is a bad ass because not only is it super believable, but I would be scared shitless if I saw him holding a gun at me, but like, he like takes right. off running and he's like, and I just love it when there's any scenes with him and Cordell, because like, you know, I don't know if it was a Cordell written thing or if Jared did it, but I love when he's like, oh, I was like, all right, daddy. And like, so they're in the middle of a fight. So people are approaching a house. He's like, all right, daddy, got it. He goes in with a gun. And then like, you know, you got bottom standing there with a gun and he's just like knocking out like SWAT people as they're coming out and like all these trained guys. So, um, yeah, I'd be a little scared if I saw Mitch holding a gun in the corner, if I was like walking down the street, but you guys built this like pillar, the two of you. So how did that form? Was it like in the beginning, did you have any conversations or was it more like you showed up, you did your job. And then over time, you know, naturally a relationship builds and that helped into it. Is it both? How did you guys make the pillar of the walkers happen? Cause you guys kind of started it all. Uh, it just, was really natural i mean first of all mitch is as much as he's he is a badass and he plays these characters that can be gruff or whatever or intimidating he's one of the kindest men i've ever met and he's very open he's very open he's very kind he's very and so like the first day on the set he was so nice to me that i was like you know he's he's a he, you know mitch is a big deal and I, I, you know so i could have easily been starstruck but i he didn't let me be starstruck so his openness to me the very first day just made everything okay for me and so it happened instantly yeah i don't know i i, I, I uh, we, we get along really 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 well it just seems to, I feel like a lot of just magic happened on the set. It just seems like, you know, like when I talk to everybody and I'll ask like, you know, is there a reason for this or, and a lot of, a lot of the cast members are just like, I, I don't know. Like it just, it just occur. It, it's almost like this organism that just mm -hmm. developed and it's like, we don't know how we, but we love it. We support it and it's still happening, but it's just so interesting because it's just, you know, so different. He's also, and Mitch is a really, really good actor. So you feel um when someone has your back i don't know i mean he like i i feel like he could do anything in a scene and i'll be there for him and i could do anything in the scene and he'll be there for me there's a lot of trust and i and that happened in immediately it was crazy i don't know I, i'm lucky i'm i would love to say well you know we really worked out we didn't do anything it's just we got lucky we both feel really lucky. Yeah. Well, to bring up like a couple of moments that we kind of talked about a little bit, but Abilene stroke. So first of all, let's just say for the record that when that happened, so I see uh, screeners ahead of time. So I can't like tweet like, oh my God, what's going on kind of thing. I have to wait for, and then by the time I wait, I already kind of know what happened. But when that happened and I saw that, I was like, if they kill her, I'm done. I was like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm done. I'm not watching it anymore. Like, I was like, they cannot kill her. So for you, when you read that in the script, um, obviously, I mean, there's a scene after and like, and things like that. But when you read that, were you like, okay, first of all, hope I'm not dying on the show. Cause I feel like, you know, right. they're going to kill somebody, but, and then also 
did you do anything in particular to try to handle that storyline? Because she's so, not only was it like, you know, obviously super believable and very emotional and sad. And I asked Cal about it and Cal said like for him, you know, with that Thanksgiving episode, when he had to say bitch to you, like he said that it was so difficult for him and then he kept apologizing and he was like, and, and I didn't want to say it. And, like, and it's not me saying it, you know, it's in the script. And, and, and he said that he had such a hard time. And then um, as character, he said that it was, um, like almost like a dread feeling to walk out and be the one to find you basically or Abilene like oh, on yeah, the ground yeah. and like you know how horrible and th- that guilt comes on you but for your character this happens and you know I had a momentary freak out because again I was like and then even if we see you in the hospital it doesn't mean anything so I don't so I'm like I want her out of the hospital and safe so I was panicking so first I want to know when you read it if you were like oh no what is, is something happening and then no. Al, um, were you, how did you kind of piece together how you wanted it to look um, in terms of when we see you and then when we see you in the hospital and her reaction and how she kind of comes off because it wasn't, um, I feel like TV, a lot of times when they show things, it's like, oh, like, you're right. Like it's a very big dramatic. It wasn't, it was very simple, clean. And kind of what you would expect if that was unfortunately to happen to somebody. So Anna's really good about telling all of us beforehand, you know, like there's, there's like Kale. Oh shit. I can't say that. You can say it if you want me to hold it. No, no, I won't even say it. There are things that have happened where, uh, it looks like maybe someone's going away or whatever, or like I've, I'm potentially dead. Anna's really good at saying beforehand, like that, you're not dead. Uh, you know, but when you read this episode, just know you don't die at the end. Um, or you're not dead. I'm not writing off the show or uh, she's really good to, to all of us about that. So there's that. Um, and then in terms of, I, I started reading what uh, transient ischemic attacks are and TIAs. Um, I did some research and then our, uh, our the guy on our set who does the COVID protocol, he had one. And so I like, I, I grilled him a little bit. <laughs> and it's, they're not, like we made it way more dramatic than these possibly are okay. you don't always pass out in fact it's, it's it's so transient that you may you may not lose consciousness at all um but you know abilene did lose consciousness and it, it's just it was it's very undramatic and so um i didn't th- i thought about okay how am i going to go down because they wanted me to go down um and it was Steve, Steve Robin episode. And, and he's the one who came up with the drag of the foot. Like maybe if you, dra- you know, he came, he, I was like, maybe it's like, I st- I mean, I came up, I, I, I kind of worked at home about the realization is, is, am I okay? Yeah, I'm fine. And I keep going. And when it, it's, and then I drop. And he came up with like, maybe you lose feeling in one of your feet. And so you, that's you, your foot drives. Um, so he made it a lot better. <laughs> Steve made it like a lot better. And, um, and you know, I fell, but we also had a stunt person. And um, uh, Roxy, who is our uh, hair person, she, this, this stunt person doesn't look anything like me. I mean, I guess she's, we're the same height. Right. But how they lit it and the wig they put on her and her genius. I was literally watching it being filmed. And I went, that's me. I mean, like watching it, I'm watching her do it. And I think it's me. It was crazy. It was crazy to me. I was like, holy crap, that really looks like me. Uh-huh. Um, so that was cool. Uh, but I mean, what's really great is like, thank God for the internet. I mean, I, I, you know, being an actor now, 
It's so easy to research stuff. Back in the day, you'd have to go to the library, you'd have to, or you try to find people or whatever. Um, so everything's at your fingertips. Actors have no excuse not to do research. It's all right there. Um, I don't know. Did that answer the question? No, it did. And but because it was so to me, it was so realistic because, again, I hate that like, oh, like that kind of thing. I hate that. And it wasn't that. And that's what I was saying. It was so clean and precise and so believable, like scary believable that I was like, oh, my God. Like I was literally I was I was ready to pick it. <laughs> so I was like, if she's not coming back, I was ready to pick it. But um, it was so believable. And even, the, um, you know, the hospital scene, like with you waking up and you know, having um bottom there and like the, just the two of you, it's just like, you know, it's like you get like a little like lump in your throat, like watching the two of you talk and then having you just be like, you, I'm okay, it's okay, but we have other thing. And like, and that's Abilene's always like go-to is like, but there's other things going on. I need you to also handle other things. And then he's always taking care of you though, but he's always going, yes, but I want to make sure you're okay. And then I'll handle it. And then you're like, no, handle the other things. I'm fine. So it's always, and it's so interesting to watch the two of you. And I loved that hospital scene in particular when you guys are having that conversation. I got like a little like lump in my throat. Cause I was like, I want, I like, I'm emotional, but like, I get what she's saying and I get what he's saying. And like, they just want their kids to be okay. And, and she's so tough. She's just such a tough person. And she well, just he was, he was great in that scene. He was so but one of the things about the hospital, not that scene, but the, when they're working on me, which you never really got to see, I'm like, that was the best acting I've ever done in my life. <laughs> you never really, you never really got to see me, but because they were real nurses, they hired real nurses to do this stuff. And, you know, all the props were real. And it was a really good actor who, uh, who was the doctor. I can't remember her name right now, but she was really good. Um, I mean, she was an actor. She wasn't a doctor, but all the nurses were real. And I've been, unfortunately, I've been in the hospitals a lot uh, with my sisters. And um, I just know what the confusion is. And so I, it was playing this confusion stuff. And I, and I, and I was so in that I was just so happy with my was so happy with it. And then, you know, you don't see any of it, but I was like, I just remember really liking that day. <laughs> Uh, well, maybe like we'll see like a deleted scene or something. Maybe they'll like yeah, no. throw it out there. No, but they were really good. Like all the nurses and stuff were really good. And there was a male nurse and there was two female nurses and they were all, yeah, they were, and they, they're, there's what they give, you know, me the belief, you know, it's like, if you have real people around you doing their real jobs, it's like, well, I, I don't have to do, it was just so, it was awesome. I just like moments like that, even though it doesn't ever show up on things, those are really fun. Yeah. And you have that forever, you know, like you have to hold on to that forever. So it's kind of like a little secret. There's another scene that you have that I want to bring up too. And like, you know, and I'm watching the time, so I don't want to keep it for too much longer, but there's another scene in particular where, um, you know, you kind of made up with August a little bit and you guys are on the ranch and Kevin comes into the picture. And of course, Abelian is not that into Kevin, which of course I'm going, ironically, it wasn't a gray flag, but I was like, red flag, red flag. <laughs> like if she was like, <laughs> dog. Um, and then he asked you, you know, can you do me a solid? Like, listen, he's helping us with the horse ranch. He's giving us money, blah, blah, blah. So you're like, absolutely. Cause you're going to do anything for your family, right? But there was this thing you did, and I want to ask you about it, if it was, like, intentional or if it was just because I'm crazily watching these episodes. But when he walks away, you offer Kevin, I think, dinner to come in. And he's like, oh, no, I have other stuff to do, but that's, like, really nice. And you're like, okay. And, like, and when he walks away, you, like, made a face. And to me, the face was, I'm... I wasn't offering it to you to be nice. I wasn't offering it for an olive branch. I was doing it because you know, August asked me to do it, but I don't trust you. And like, I, I like saw it in like your face when he like walks away. And then I was going, Oh no, I really don't trust Kevin. Cause like, after I saw that face and like your response to him. So in that scene, and again, like I could be like very nitpicking like moments in it, but I just felt like Abilene did an olive branch quote unquote for August 
but I think really wasn't. Like, I think when he walked away, she really was like, I'm still not on board with this guy. So I wanted to ask you about that scene in particular. And I don't know if you remember anything like specific about it, but for me, I just, I just noticed it was one of those like little things. And, um, you know, and I was driving and if this helps you too, I was driving everybody crazy because, um, even when, like I was talking to, um, I think I was talking to Kobe about it, but when they're, when they're traveling with the, when, um, Cordell and Cassie are traveling with the, um, what's called the, um, I'm like losing my, my words today. The stuff from gray flag and it's like in a box and it's like beeping it's making noises and they take it out and like they the whole thing there's a comment made where you know should we open it because we're opening pandora's box and then they were like i don't know i don't know and then they eventually open it obviously and then we see like the whole episode they put it all back together they get sort of in trouble from cap and then like you know life moves on because it's still in there when i caught that line of are we opening pandora's box i then got concerned that gray flag might not be the end of the trouble that will be heading towards the Walker family. Right. And so Jeff was like, I think Jeff and Kobe, I mentioned it too. And they were like, you, how did you hear? And I was like, well, cause you, it was in there. Like there was a line in there about Pandora's box. And like, so to me, it meant there was more to come. So with your scene with Kevin, um, you know, with Jake and playing Kevin, I felt like there was more to that than you just being like, Oh, coming for dinner. And he's like, no, I have something to do and walks away. There was just, I don't know. There's just something more in your face. And I wasn't sure if it was planned that way or if it was just like something that happened. And I just like noticed it, but it just made me feel like she just didn't fully embrace him. It was more of like a courtesy to her grandson kind of thing. Um, I don't, rem- I don't remember. I didn't intentionally do anything. So I never try to intentionally, and if I am intentional, it's usually horrible. So I try not to be intentional about, but again, going back to circumstances, but yes, you're absolutely right. I did it for, I did it for August. So I'm probably what happened at the time was like, I've offered this olive branch. Of course you turned it down. You prick. (laughs) <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You're like, That's the all right, last thank time. God, <laughs> Yeah. Like, this is the last time I'm ever going to do something nice for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 because even, you know, when, when Kale, I mean, not Kale, when Augie, um, you know, says, you know, I could be doing this. I'm, I'm part of me. is like, he's going to do what for you. I'm like, I don't trust any of it. I'm like, all right, maybe I, I feel like probably what happened. Cause this is the way I feel. I'm like, maybe Augie is right. And I'm being too harsh. The scene happens with Kevin and I'm like, no, I'm right. I <laughs> just, I'm right. I'm right all along. I like, I don't care what Augie says. If I'm a hard ass bitch, so be it. I know I'm right. And if it came across my face, then it came across my face. Well, you know, it, it does. And how you explain it makes sense. Like, right. Cause we all interpret it differently. For me, I was like, Ooh, something's wrong with Kevin, but how you're saying it completely makes sense to be like, all right, thanks a lot. Asshole. Like I gave you a second. You, you don't even want to like offer it fine, go, go do your like little lunch. I'm done with you. And I didn't trust you from the start anyway. So fine. And that, and like, I'm done with it, but it does show on your face. And to me, I feel like sometimes the best acting is when you're not talking, which I know like sounds odd sometimes for some, like some things, but like, it's, it's a, a movement an emotion, a facial expression. And when I saw your facial expression, I was like, there's something like, it's just not right. And if she doesn't feel it's not right, there's something wrong so that's why i was saying i didn't wave like a gray flag but it was like a red flag like i was like something's wrong because she just has that kind of moral like north compass like she just seems to know she's really good at reading people and like so i just felt kevin is so smarmy he is so smarmy i know and uh, you know and then he you know is a dick to uh uh cassie and I really like Cassie and I'm like dead to me. I, I really feel that this is Molly, but I've now made it Abilene. It's like, you know, if you 
mess around with one of my friends, you know, your my friend could forgive you. I won't ever. <laughs> I mean, it's, hor it's horrible, but I feel Aveline is like that. Yeah, but I think that's what makes her so great, though. You know, like I don't think it's necessarily a flaw because, well, listen, maybe it would be a flaw in like real life. But on Walker, it's not a flaw because you are right, like 99.9% .9 of the time. So it's not a flaw when you notice something or even like when, you know, August started going kind of downhill and you like kind of had a little conversation with Cordell about it. And he's like, oh, it's, it's, it's fine, mom. Like, you know, like, mom, it's fine. And you're going, okay. Like, and because you're like, it ain't. And like, and then it wasn't. So it's like, she has these. And I warn him. I warned Cordell the first episode. Yep. Watch. Yeah. Don't be fooled. Think, yeah. And I think you also said that you're favoring. I think even in the first episode, you were kind of like you're sweet on Stella and you're still and you're not really watching him as much and you're letting them get over on you and that you need to start kind of looking. So that's why that's what I mean by. So anytime you make a face or do something or say something, I'm like, like, because I'm like 100 percent going. Until I guess one of the writers writes something where you're wrong, I'm going, she's right. Something's wrong. <laughs> so I'm like fully on board. Like I'm like a hundred percent, Emily, I will follow you wherever you walk. So like when I saw that Kevin scene in particular, I was like, something's wrong. Like it's not good. Um, but I love, I love that scene. You were great in that scene. Um, like I said, the hospital scene you were great in. I, there's so many good ones and I would, I would keep you for like multiple hours, but there's one thing that I just want to ask you about the episode. So episode 13, so the part, there were part two, like two parts, 12 and 13. So it was part one and part two. You're in the episode kind of dealing with, and by the way, I'm manifesting this out loud to like Anna or anyone else that hears, put you in more stuff. I want to see more Abilene. I wish you were in that episode more. So I'm putting that out there because you're my favorite character. Throw it out there. Um, But when we see you, you're as any mother is like stressing because you have no idea what's going on. You don't know where your son is. You don't know what's happening. And I loved the scene where, and sometimes it can be very difficult to go toe to toe with somebody that is a family friend, right? Where it blurs the lines right. and you guys show up to the station and to talk to cap blurs the lines. It's family. It's a friend. It's someone that watched out for your son when they were partners. So there's a blur there, but at the same time, your son is MIA killed. I don't know. So when you walk in and, you know, and, you know, uh, bottom walks in and everybody is in, you want answers. And it's very out of it that like, if cap doesn't get them, you guys will get them. So I wanted to know for that scene, was it, was it fun to kind of play that scene and kind of go like against authority and be like, I don't care. Cause I like, wish I could do that one day, like in real life and just walk in. It's like a station and be like, ah! <laughs> like, you know, and we never get to do that in real life. Right. But like in that scene, right. it was so fun for you guys to walk in and be like, I want it. And you're like yelling at the woman <laughs> and everyone's like, we want to know. We want. And then Cap's like, I'll, I'll take care of this. And like he steps in and trying to calm you guys down and that you're working on it. So what was that kind of scene like for you? And how are you feeling now that 13 is aired? So like Gray Flag has kind of sort of demolished, possibly question mark. We had um, a character come back. So th there was a lot, as usual, that happens in that episode. But I wanted to ask you specifically about the, kind of that sheriff moment. Like, you, well, I should say the Texas Rangers, that moment when you go in there and kind of are demanding, like, I want to know what's going on with my son to where we're where we left off, basically, where where we are now, where the characters might be going. Uh, um. The thing was actually hard. It's hard when there are a lot of moving pieces. Like two character scenes are easy. <laughs> when when but it was in the ranger station. There are a lot of atmosphere. Um, our atmosphere is really good, by the way. They really care. Um, but there's a lot of atmosphere. There's a lot of moving parts. We have three cameras going on the, uh, at once, and so. Uh, I didn't feel great about the scene. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess by the end I did. I mean, by the end I did. Great? I embraced like the chaos of it. What made you not feel good about it? Like as an actor, like was, was there something that just 
you were like, eh, it's not working. Well, sometimes this is gonna this is gonna sound really accurate. Okay. Sometimes the circumstances you will feel like crap about a scene because frankly, you should feel like crap about a scene. <laughs> do you know? I mean, sometimes you can't, you can't, do I feel like crap because I acted badly or do I feel like crap because I, I don't know anything about my son. I still don't know anything about my son and he just stonewalled me. And so you leave feeling like crap. Well, you should feel like crap. And so sometimes that gets blurred. Like, like, what do I really feel like crap about <laughs> the circumstances of the scene or I'm a shitty actor. So, um, <laughs> when he, but I mean, there, when he, when he, something I did like that wasn't necessarily shown is like when he does go off of me and he says, we can't, I'm like, fine, fuck off. And I like, I, I turn on my heel and I split. You don't really see that. But I, I when he does that, I'm like, go fuck yourself. And I split. At least that's what was going on internally. Um, and so where do the characters go on from there? Well, Larry does say I have, I owe a conversation to Abilene. Um, you don't necessarily see that, but I mean, you know, obviously I'm sure I got home and realized, of course he can't tell me. And also the FBI's there. I mean, what, what Larry might say to me individually alone, isn't going to be the same thing he's going to say in front of the FBI. And so I have to realize there are boundaries and, and he can't say it. And this is a, you know, so I think, you know, on my own, of course it, he, he does, he does not owe me an apology. He cannot tell me anything. And just because we have personal relationships doesn't mean that he can tell me what's going on with his case, especially since, you know, my son's a suspect. So, uh, I mean, what happens at the end is, um, I don't know how we recover from that. I mean, I, when am I going to find out that, you know, my husband just killed a whole bunch of people? Uh, do I ever find that out? I mean, and that my, you know, my son, you know, took a motorcycle and and faced down a plane. I mean, I think there's certain things that Abby will never know and doesn't want to know. Like, I would lose my mind. If I knew what he did, I, I lose my mind. Do you think, did you, and I don't know if this was obviously in the script because we don't see it on like in the episode, but when um, Cordell's trying to get a, a message to his parents to let you guys know he's alive, all we see is um, Stella pick up the phone, kind of not understand, then kind of get the clue like th that there's a hint coming to her. And then she looks, you know, at Bonham do you think I'm assuming that he tells <laughs> Abilene before he leaves, but uh, like, do you think that she's aware that he's alive and Bonham's going to help him to the extent of what he's doing? Or do you think it's more of like, he's alive and I'm going to go check on him. And she's just clueless as to like how bad things really are because they don't show you guys reunite. You don't get to see Cordell. You don't get to talk to him. So it's like, I don't know if she knows how bad things are when he leaves, when Bonham leaves to go check in. So I'm assuming that he would tell her, yes, he's alive. And, but I don't know after that, what he told her to what extent. I'm pretty sure he probably, he said, okay, I'm going to go check on Cordell. If he's alive. And, <laughs> and great, please go check on our son. I, I don't think she... <laughs> I don't think he's calling her. Yeah, by the way, we're, um, you know, Kevin, you were right. Kevin's horrible and we're like chasing him down now and I'm going with our son and I have my shotgun. I mean, I don't think, I don't, I don't think I know any of that. Yeah. And I don't know now that how much, uh, like, I don't, I don't think I know any of that. And I don't know if I'm going to ask. And like, sorry to interrupt you, but like, then I'm now I'm realizing because you said that out loud. Do you even know that it's Kevin? So I don't even think we know if you know. Like, I'm trying to think if there was a scene 
where they kind of tell you. The only thing I could think of is when the FBI comes into the house and they're searching the house, but you you guys are going, why are you in our house? Like, what are you looking for? And it was really, they're not going to tell us Cordell. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're not they gonna, find they, they, so like, I don't think you yeah. know that Kevin was involved yet. No, but so that all still has to be like unpacked somehow and revealed at, at some point. Right. And, I really wish when, like, when that all happens, that Abilene gets like a nice, like, run around the track of like, I was right. Everyone listened to me moving forward. <laughs> Cause like, she's so like, non, she doesn't take credit really, I feel like, for as much as she should for what she offers to this family. And I feel like she needs a nice lap around of, of a track to just be like, I'm the winner. I'm right. Listen to me. I don't think that's what she does. I don't think, like, I know my mom, not that kind of person. Stuff my- yeah, my, all the stuff my mom used to do, she never talked about any of the stuff. Like when she was right, or da, 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 da. she never gloated. Like I'm a gloater. Um, but uh, she was she's just not that way. Now, Cassie, Cassie comes out and says, I was right. I was right all along. No one trusted me. Da, da, da. I feel like that's Cassie's role. You know, Cassie deserves the lap. Yeah. Well, and also because she, I mean, to have a relationship with someone. I mean, is even more, I mean, I can't even imagine what that would feel like. To, and then to find out that he's awful. And I know that kind of broke my heart too, when she was talking um, to Trey and kind of saying like, I that was a great I, scene. It was so good. And like for her to say, like, I ignored everything, everything in my being, <laughs> I thought I was crazy. And what I loved about them, including that line is that's the go-to for women. If we have a feeling and we think something's wrong, we are crazy, quote unquote, right? So I love they kept that in where she was like, you all made me think I was crazy, that something was wrong with me because I was thinking something was wrong. And so I turned those feelings into like affection, like kind of the opposite. Like I kind of pushed my way aside and started a relationship with this guy because of kind of you got indirectly because I know, I know Trey says something like, well, you can't blame all of that on me. And she goes, no, I'm not. But indirectly, it is their fault, you know, because right. nobody believed her and and then put her in this position. And then I started kind of joking that, you know, she picks horrible men because it's she's like, oh, for two or like over oh, three at this point. But, you know, she she deserves to be listened to. And she and she and in that moment, I felt like that was her vindication to be like, listen to me like I have a voice like just because you know I think of something but my like I said my favorite part was including that thing because that's our go-to right it's like oh you're just crazy like you're just a woman that's crazy or or you just don't know and I love that they kept that in and the way that she delivered it was not like a a movement or preaching it was a deliverance of like of a hurt feeling which is how we feel I think as women when something like that happens we're not here to like preach you I'm not trying to like shove it in your face i'm trying to say listen i had a voice you didn't listen to me and you didn't listen to me to a point where you made me doubt myself and make me think i'm nuts to then i went the extreme opposite and ended up possibly in a relationship with a guy that's crazy and you were not there for me you know and like it it was just heartbreaking that that whole scene i mean i agree with you in terms of abilene i don't think she'll ever ever take credit or be like i was right it's just not the kind of woman she is i wish she had a scene like that just because i feel like you deserve it because you're always right. Like, and, and so like you deserve it. So that's why I'm putting it out there. You deserve that. But um, I agree. I do think at least at the bare minimum, having Cassie have that moment made me feel a little better that somebody was holding some of the guys accountable. Like I know the men want to be men, but we're women too. And we're here. We're observing. We're aware of what's going on. And I like that she was able to at least get that part out and kind of say something. But I mean, no. I mean, I, I guess she sort of blames them, but but one of the things that I liked about the scene, she goes, you know, when my heart beat faster, you know, was that because I was attracted or, I mean, I'm making it up, but she said heartbeat faster, but I mean, now I'm making, I can't remember, I'm paraphrasing, but, you know, but I feel like as women, oh, I don't know about as women, I feel as me, the difference between intuition and Am I, is my brain just getting involved? Am I thinking this out to like, what, like, what is a real fear? And what is this fear? Like there is, and, and so when she says, well, my heart beat faster, you know, 
I was like, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, when do you trust that it's true intuition? And when do you, when is it you just, it's anxiety. You know, to me, that that's always my thing. It's like, what am I listening to? Is it real? Or is this me being Meshuggah? I mean, you know what I mean? I'm like, what? And I, so how I love that. It's like, will my heart be faster? Yeah. Huh? Like, how do you decipher that, you know? And it's a struggle. Yeah, and it's hard. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's a struggle as, like, and I, I'm not speaking, like, for all women, but I think for some women, it's a struggle. It's a struggle for me to kind of decipher between the two. I can't imagine then dumping me in an area where it's, like, primarily men and they're kind of talking to you. And it's, like, you know, you're kind of, like, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't want to cause a problem. I don't want to be seen as the issue person but at the same time I'm a little concerned but then they're gonna think I'm being paranoid because of my past relationship so like so much goes through your brain that ultimately her decision was to just shut down because if she kept talking I think she felt like she would have been viewed a certain way which is unfortunate and I think that's where her anger is coming from you know when she's having that conversation because she should have been able to say how she felt you know and so like but I related to that time, it- but at the same time, it's 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 the law, right? I mean, people can't go on intuition. Mm. I mean, you need facts, you need proof. You can't like I just feel like he's shady, and I mean, so uh, because there was times that uh, something felt off for Cordell too, and he was using his intuition. It's like that, you know. They do that a lot. The you know, I felt it wasn't right. Follow it. I think with uh, Mickey too. Mickey, it, they've all had like. This doesn't seem right, but at the same time, you, it, I, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's, I, it's a hard thing. Like I, I, I would be doubting everyone. I was like, where's your proof? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's hard. Cause it's because like, you have a funny feeling. I know. Cause it's like intuition can lead to you finding out factual things that you need to put someone away, but intuition could also mm-hmm lead you down a dead end or intuition could lead you down the total wrong place towards a wrong person that had nothing to do with it. And so it's like, how do you decipher? But I guess that's such, such a beauty of the show is there are times where I think everybody at some point did something wrong because there's just no way to really determine and what I thinking is that correct? So at some point, like even like, and for Abilene, that was like the whole, you know, back with the fire and the barn and in the, the hiding of the information. Was that right? People can argue. Yes. Was it wrong? People could argue. Yes. So it's like, I think at, at every point in the show or every season or every, or every character has had that moment where it was like, was it right? Yeah. Sometimes it is their intuition and following that worked. And then there are times where it wasn't and they show both. And by doing that, it shows you like, there really is no answer. Like there is none of us can be like, this is the way to go. This is how you do it. It's like, we're just kind of making it up as we go. Almost like what actors do, right? Like we're just making it up as we go and hoping that, you know, you're hitting where you're supposed to, where you're, you're getting the right reaction or the right response. And that's why I think your show Again, and you might like, it might sound crazy, but like, I talk about it like it's real because I feel like so much of it is so layered in real life. I mean, there's just so many themes in it. And yes, I know, again, it's very dramatic. I'm not like, you know, getting shot out of my house, but there's a lot of things that happen on the show that I really relate to because I I feel the same way. Like, I'm like, oh, should I say that at work? Maybe I shouldn't say that at work or should I do? I don't know. And then, or like that feeling, and sometimes I followed it and it's not right. Or sometimes I followed my gut and it was right. It's like, so to show all of that in a show yeah. with all the action and all the drama and all the characters having multi-layers, could you ask for anything better than that? I mean, it's just, it's one of the best shows I've ever watched. I mean, I don't know what well, else. And then there was, there was a scene where, where Trey kind of basically opens up to, um, Oh God, what's her name? The woman who was also in Gray Flag, but that ex- escaped. The woman who got shot. What's oh, the character's um, name? Oh my God. Oh, it starts with an L. Lena? Was it Lena? Lena? Leia? Le- oh, Lena. One of those things going to kill Lana? me. Lana? We'll Lana? Go with Lana? Maybe Lana. It was, I know it was with an L. It was Lana, maybe? But she's a, she's a terrific actress. But, but I remember when he sort of 
kind of basically reveals his, you know, like he trusts her. I remember, like, I think I screamed at the, I read the script, I read the scripts. I know where it's going, but I remember, I think I, I think I even like, why are you trusting her? You don't know anything about her. Really? Like what the heck? And it turns out it's okay, but still it's like, she could have easily turned she could on him. So he trusts his instincts there. And, and she could have killed him. A, yes. Or turned him in or whatever. And <laughs> he'd be dead. I I remember when like when he trusts her, I was like, you don't trust me. <laughs> so okay, I feel so much better because you're watching it like I'm watching it. <laughs> Cause I'm like yelling at Oh, I, I'm a fan. I watch I I'm a fan. I I'm I, I'm uh, yeah. I don't watch things particularly very critically. I watch things as a fan. Yeah. Like I love Walker Independence. I well, I love Walker Independence so much that Hannah said, Do you like that show more than I? <laughs> she was like, What? I, do you still like Walker? Do you still like I'm like <laughs> But I, I do love that show. I love that show. And listen, if Jared could be on both, I'm just saying. They could have a I'm character. Just saying. just saying. You could do a cameo. Just, just on that was a cool cameo, by the way. It was such a cool cameo. And um, I was like, how are they going to pull this off? Because, like, I, I'm i not going to lie. I think it was G whoever came up with the idea, it was genius to have Matt. Because Hoyt was such a loved character of Walker. When that happened, and I was, like, devastated. And then it was like jk he's on walker independent and i was like wait what and like he's playing like an ancestor and i was like oh my god that works it makes sense he changed his look up a little bit so when i spoke to matt about it i said the same thing i said did you know like when they killed you <laughs> did you know you were and he was like and he said the same thing you said like yeah they told me like i'm, I'm it's fine i'm moving to a different show i'm gonna be playing this and he told me like the elements that he changed like i'm not as clean cut i have more hair and like he did certain things to make the character look different yada yada but it it worked and it worked so well. So when they like that kind of came out, and again I saw the screener, like so I knew it was coming. That Jared was on both. I was going, how the hell are they going to make that work and make sense? And it was like this random guy, like you know, with a name or whatever that shows up, and there's like mysterious, and there's like not that much information, and it's like it was just done in such a perfect way that like it it just worked. And what was even better was it was the two of them which I thought was just so genius to have the two of them that were on another show together, like, you know, side by side, totally acting like they have no clue who they are and like, and just talking. Well, cause they wouldn't in real life. I mean, they wouldn't if it was an ancestor or someone, but, oh, it was genius to have that. So, yeah, I mean, so why cool. can't they you on I the try. show? The horse here, the horse here. Oh my God. So good. Do I know you i can't remember the exact line but he was like you look familiar whatever i don't know it was so and then when he kills him which you're not really i, I was like, like is he dead i know i wasn't i wasn't sure either because they they don't really like show it show it like they they show a part of it but i don't know if he's dead dead yeah i, I was like it's i'm not convinced <laughs> so he might come Except back they moved on they moved on and I was like, oh, well, I guess he is dead. In which case I was like, he's dead? <laughs> or what would be really funny is like, if he ended up coming back and then they were like, you look like a ghost or like something weird. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that'd be really funny. <laughs> but you could easily be on that show. I think you, oh my gosh, you would be so fun. Like if you played like some, like, I think like an outlandish crazy character for you on that show would be so fun. Cause like that- I've pitched so something, I've, I've pitched something specific okay so i'm gonna keep my fingers crossed i would love to see you on that show i think you'd be so good on it but i love the crossovers i actually asked man i was like do you ever think like there was a there'd be a way to cross the shows over all together like all of the cast somehow like whether it was like a dream or like something weird or freaky or like like some way because like you know like supernatural used to have those weird like one-off episodes that like kind of really didn't forward the storyline, but it was funny and like it would be like a really good just random episode. Um, so I was like, maybe there's a way that you guys could do like some sort of really cool. It doesn't forward the storyline, but it's just fun for us to like have like right, 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 or something, and like you're all together 
and you're like wait why are we like in the past we're like what's <laughs> going on and then like you're all trying to figure stuff out and that would be so fun to have all the cast together I would I would love that that because you guys are all very similar in um and I think this again is probably a testament to Jared but it's very similar in again the intent the work how hard everyone works the fun um that they all want to have and the respect for everybody and it seems to float between both shows so i think if you all kind of came together it'd be so much fun but i i just don't know how they i know would be, it would be so so much fun it, yeah. it would be well i want to <laughs> end like you don't love our show <laughs> <laughs> she's like yeah we're gonna do this with us. <laughs> You're like, I swear I don't. It's just, it's a really good show. But I mean, but that's good that it, you love it. I mean, it, it is a good show. It's a really good show. I mean, it, it ended and I guess sad. I want to know what happened to Tom. Like, I'm invested. I need to know, was it a good thing, a bad thing? that A guy with a tattoo? Oh my God, that I'm casting so was crazy to me. That casting was crazy. Oh my gosh. How they got those two guys, I mean- how do they look so much alike? I don't know who whoever did that casting was amazing because I thought it was the same person for two. And then at first I was like, yeah. "Is it the actor playing Tom that's doing two? And I was like, "Oh no, it's not." Because like once they were next to each other, I was like, "No, oh, it's two separate people." But like far away, like yeah, I was like, "Oh my god, it's not him." And then I was all confused and oh my, oh my gosh, yeah. And then like, and I want to know everything. Like I was just uh, talking about that the other day, like. Is it bad that he's gone or is it not bad? Because we're all acting like it's bad that Tom's missing, but maybe it's not bad. And I don't know what this tattoo on the hand thing means and what this group is that stole him at the end. And so is that good or bad? Are they going to torture him or are they protecting it? Like, I don't know. So, um, uh, these writers with the, with these shows, I don't know how you guys all do it, but like, that's literally how it ended. And I was like, so I'm like, Oh, come on season two. And then for Walker, um, you know, there's stuff um i you know to come right we have i think three more episodes that to air i'm always the worst with this because i've seen them early so i think there's three left right i think there's, there's three yeah so there's 16 I think there's three. Right? yeah so there's three left to air so is there anything i'm gonna like ask you really quickly and then i have a couple fan questions so i'll shoot fan questions really quickly at you just because of the time but are there is there anything that you could tease about the last three and because I've talked to other actors, I can give you some things they said to try to help you <laughs> without giving Okay, that'd be helpful because because um it's been it's a hard, month hard now since we filmed and I don't remember anything. Yeah, it's hard that's, to that's what makes fun to watch the show because I literally don't remember anything. It's like seeing it for the first time. <laughs> well, it, and it's so good too. And if you're able to like <laughs> I know a lot of actors like don't like to watch themselves, but if you take yourself out of those scenes that maybe if you don't like to watch yourself, if you take yourself out of those scenes, the show is so good that like, I could see you being a fan of it. Like just like enjoying it and like having a good time. Cause it's just, yeah. It's and the last two episodes were really good. They were, oh my I God. thought they were exceptional. It was so good. Really exceptional. Anyway. Uh, so, so what Gail uh, said so lead, lead to, me into the tease <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna lead you i'm gonna help you out so and and the word the person that had the worst was kale so if it makes you feel better he he was the first one so kale said there's a lot of heart um he said that there might be some like shake-ups um but he kept leaning back on the heart he kept going but there's a lot of heart there's a lot of heart there's a lot of, and i said okay jeff upped it and said i like what cal said that there's a lot of heart you might be seeing some people and i was like oh my god jeff you're giving stuff away because like i already knew i mean it aired but like he was like you might be seeing some people that you haven't seen in a while so i was going oh okay um he said i like that he said heart he said there might be some conflict coming up between some people that you might not expect um and then what else did he say he said um and then I think he said something about that, you know, it, the gray, like gray flag, it's kind of like might just be the beginning sort of thing. And then Kobe said, kind of just added on to that. And Kobe just went like, you know, there's so much chaos ready to go. And then we we actually talked about the episodes that had aired now because like his episodes coming out after. So um, we talked a little bit about some of the stuff with gray flag already. And then his tease was kind of just like, it just gets 
he's like when you think you, we can't top it he's like we top it but he's like but it's emotional and he and then he went back to the same thing and he's like but i do like the heart thing that there's a lot of and, and then he, and then he ended i think with family and he was like it's very family oriented and there's a lot of things that you might not suspect so those were like some of the thing I, I forgot what like some other people said about it. I'm talking to Violet um, next week. So she'll be like the kind of the final one to add in. I think um, the teasers and stuff. But so those were the teasers that I got so far. So how could you tease the last? You could actually, if you want, I don't know if you remember what happened in 14, but you can tease it because this will come out after 14. So if you want to give a teaser towards that or like, say something related to 14 that's fine because it will come out after so like at, at 13 we ended with that. okay i can say this okay i can say this see hey, she got it okay and i, I tried to that. of the whole series or, or the season i read it and went <gasps> really okay question addendum did you say <laughs> did you go <gasps> last line or just oh, overall last episode i don't know if last you're allowed line. to say that but last, last line. scene last all right. scene last all right last scene okay not that i'm saying anything for anyone listening foreshadowing but i'm just saying that's what i wanted to know was it the last line but okay so last scene i get you last i also scene. i i think i cursed out loud was my my reaction like i I, like well actually i think it was i think it was more this i think it was because you've seen all of them yeah i've seen them yeah okay i think it was more like oh come on (laughs) yeah it was like i think it was yeah i had like the same reaction yeah i think it was a mix between i was like holy shit and then i went what And and then i was like no that's it like no no more to fast forward that it, it ended and i was like crap because like you know because when we get screeners there's no like credits and things at the end so i'm like right 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 is that it and i'm like trying to like fast forward and i'm like it. i was like that was it <coughs> so yeah that was my reaction <laughs> was that yeah. fun i was like re- i was like holy shit and then i just went what and yeah and then i just went is there more is there more and i was like oh no and now i'm stuck waiting um yeah is there i think it was, i was like oh, i think i was like oh come on <laughs> <laughs> i completely agree that's why i asked you if it was the episode or if it was the last line but i agree with you last scene i agree with you last scene on that one um so that's a, that's a good tease that's a good tease um any word any update um on season two at all because i've been telling people like generically because I, I've been on a lot of sets before, obviously, and like worked with actors that you get a letter of intent. I've explained that on a previous podcast that a letter of intent is like a letter that actors get that lets them know like they're coming back on board for another season. If they want to, they can sign it, even though they have contracts and things like that. But the letter of intent has to go out June 30th or like the last day of June, the latest. So you guys would have to hopefully, mo- and I said, as a courtesy, most studios don't make you wait. I have seen actors wait. But most of the time, you know, ahead of that. But then you have upfronts, which the CW slash next star. Uh, make it, I'm allowed to make that face. Uh, might be doing an upfront. I don't know. And if they do an upfront, upfronts are in May in New York City. And I'm a New Yorker. So I always go to the upfronts, um, like I'm based out of New York um, and fly back and forth all the time. But I always go to the upfronts. So I'm hoping that. And usually for the upfronts, for people that don't know what that is, if you haven't listened to the other podcast, that's where like they bring all the networks come together. Their networks have different days. They bring all the actors from all their big shows. They come for advertisers, buyers. They kind of sell the show. They do a whole to do, spend way too much money, but we all have a lot of fun. They have like a little party. And then there's like fans that come and they get to meet like some of the talent and things like that. So the upfronts um, that I go every single year and if the cw slash next star i don't know what to call them because i'm not really sure what the official name is going to be but if they have one that's usually like the first or second week in may so i feel like it's good that we haven't heard anything because i would assume you would hear something in the next few weeks because if you were going to go to the upfronts they would have to book all of you right like your flights and all of the stuff so i'm thinking if we, if we haven't heard anything, it might be good 
I don't know. I'm hoping, crossing fingers. Well, I'm Irish, so everything's bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I would hope we would find out sooner than later because, you know, our crew is Austin based. Right. And they're going to have to find other gigs. And, and that's what I tell know. people. I tell people too, like, because someone asked for Walker Independence and one of the actors said, even if it was just one more season. And when I, when he had said that, I, I said, people might be asking or when they're listening, going, why one more season? And why would you say something like that? And I said, you have to remember there's 400 plus people that need a job. So when you're guaranteed at least one more season, even if it's your last season, it gives them a year to find other production jobs, other gigs, other places to direct. Like, you know, it gives them time and you're still making money. Like you get to make the money for the year. It's like, it's a nice cushion that not everyone's given. So it's kind of nice, even if we're upset that there, you know, it might be a last season, but it gives the 500, whatever people notice. Whereas, you know, you know, this probably 15, 20 years ago, you got no notice. It would be like the show would be on and then it would just be canceled. And I would always go, what happened in like the 400 real? Like, is everybody scrambling to try to find something? So, um, so I mean, if anything, I would assume if we haven't heard anything, the hope is that not that I'm hoping for a last season, but the hope is that at least there's a season where people would have time to, you know, and even the actors have time to find other things and do things. But I'm thinking if it's April 6th and we haven't heard anything, hopefully that's a positive. So I'm going to go with positivity on it that you haven't heard. Cause I feel like you would have heard no already. So I listen, this might come out and it will bite me later, but I just feel like you would have heard no already. So I think, I think you guys are okay. The show. So it's like number one, like you, the show's so good. I just, I just can't imagine it. I would be sure. Well, and then there's the writer's strike. I mean, Oh, I know. You know so I don't know. They could be waiting to, I don't know. Because if, they could be waiting. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm, I hate to think that I'm a glass half empty person, but I think I'm a glass half empty person because I have to, I've done this for 40 years. I've got to prepare for the worst. Well, you know, and listen, that's not necessarily bad. Preparing for the worst and then being happy is better than preparing to be happy and then getting disappointed. So, I mean, yeah, but in that time I could have been happy. Like, is it better Uh, to like, you know, I, I could have been happy the whole time until finally I hear, as opposed to being in dread for whatever. And yeah, then, we, you know, I could have completely bypassed the dread. So I don't know. I know. I but really I, hope it gets picked up. I feel like an actor's life is like half dread because <laughs> I feel like you guys just yeah. never know what's going on. It's like you never know if you got the job. And then if you got the job, you don't know how many episodes. You, I feel like it's so up in the air that like it kind of makes sense for me that you would think like half you know, like the um, half the last full kind of thing or half empty. But I, I would be shocked. I The show is just so good that I would really just be like, I'd probably like fall to the floor. I'd be like, really? Like, like I would be so surprised. And sometimes I'm not like, you know, like I'll be like, oh, that made sense. You know, it was time. Like that made sense. This show, I would be shocked, like, because it's just so good. So, so I guess we're still waiting. From so your no- lips. Yeah. From so- your lips. But if you have time, I have a couple fan questions that I will throw at you really quickly. Um, I tweeted out that I was talking to you, which you probably saw because I tagged you in it. And um, I tweeted out your really cool, I like, see, with, I don't know if it will show with my photo background, but you're really cool. Oh, oh yeah, it's a great photo. I, I loved it. So there you go. So I was like, yeah, it looks cute. So love that photo because you look really cool. Okay, so I had so many questions sent in for you. So I'm going to scroll through and just ask you a couple because otherwise we'd be here all night. So, oh, this is a quick one that you can answer. So Laura at Breathe Fire 210 said, this is ironic, will we ever see Abilene on a horse? <laughs> well, you I have been on that- a horse once and... 
<laughs> no, I don't know. I, I don't know. It would be great if I learned how to ride so I wouldn't be terrified. But now they have, you know, I mean, Jeff really rides really well now. Keegan's always ridden really well. Obviously, um, uh, Mitch rides and uh, uh, Jared rides. So, you know, do they need the old gal on the horse? I don't know. <laughs> well, we're having the kumbaya. We'll get you on the horse. So <laughs> we'll, we'll make it happen so that um let's see we got oh this is a good question okay so amanda stewart which is at rooted deeply 267 said what do you love most about playing abilene also do you ever find yourself having to keep all uh well i asked you that having to keep all the guys on point we're all like are you oh. in shape but um so what's what do you love most about playing abilene i i I think I feel like Abilene's a throwback. I think Abilene is this stoic, strong throwback that I really admire. And so I, I, it, I, 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 the matriarchy of it all, of like having to keep it together, keeping keeping the family together. I, I, I really love that. There was something that happened when my mom died. And um, I'm the last of seven children. And uh, my windshield cracked. One of my brothers hit a deer. He was driving home for the funeral. Uh, that day I went to take the plane, my windshield cracked. My brother hit a deer. And my other one of my other brothers, when, it was all on the same day, we were all trying to get home for the funeral. And... Um, and we were like, what is that about? And I felt like it was my mom begging us to try to keep the family together. Um, I don't know. I know it's windshield crack. What does that mean? But I mean, I, don't, I, I just felt like it was my mom's force saying, please don't split apart. And see, like, to me. And so I feel that like. Makes sense, huh? That makes sense to me, though, huh? because if that happened, the first thing you all would do would call each other. Right. So you'd be like, oh, my God. Can't oh, yeah. wait. So like you would all communicate. And so she's saying you like keep talking to each other, keep communicating, stay in each other's lives. You know, seven of you is a lot. Yeah. Like, someone's always mad at somebody, but it's like, but all, you know, like, but you know, I have like, I I'm one of three. One of us is always pissed at some, uh, at one of us, but my mom has, and dad have always said that, but you guys need to like, you know, work through it, get over it and, you know, keep on going with it. So I, agree with that like I think like for that to happen like if that happened to me my brother and my sister the first thing we would do is call each other so I think right. you know, that, that's a legitimate thing that's that's how, yeah that's interesting wow yeah I never even looked at it that way but yeah so I feel like I I do like that of like keeping the family together you know if if you know uh Augie and and um Violet aren't getting along they have to realize they have each other that if if Liam and, and Cordell they have to realize you know me and and Bon we have to just keep it together because family is everything I mean you're the only people you really can rely on um yeah so it's interesting so like I I now view like a little bit of kind of your work on this show in particular differently because I think a lot of it is kind of like an homage oh, yeah. and like a lot of love for your mom and, but you're doing your mom very proud because you do such a great job of the show Thank you. Um, let's see. I'll ask you like one or two more questions. Okay. So Brittany at a little liar PLL five said, Molly, what's your favorite thing about working with Keegan? Keegan is probably one of the most unusual people I've ever met in my life. He's really, he's fiercely intelligent. He, he, he takes in a lot of information and, and absorbs information that he can actually talk about from a, a deep sense of knowing and understanding. Um, he's just, and he's really funny. He's, he's just, a, he's just a quirky, uh, <laughs> sometimes he's really, his self-deprecating sense of humor is really cute and funny. Um, but he is, he's, he's just unusual. He's, uh, 
he's just an unusual cat. I don't know how to describe it. He's sort of very spiritual and very connected to himself. And, 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 um, he's alternately incredibly silly and really deep. And I also heard he loves his coffee. I heard there's a routine. Oh God. Well, also he's like <laughs> obsessed with, like if you're Duncan, uh, he's, he really is, can granular, granularize. He can really uh, be very specific <laughs> about <laughs> routines that he has. And since I don't drink coffee and I don't give a crap about it. And when he goes into these in-depth detail thing responses to how he makes a cup of coffee i want to kill myself <laughs> <laughs> that I'm and the watches it. i've heard a lot about the watches and the coffee so <laughs> uh, i'm sorry keegan but people don't like it <laughs> everyone tells me they're like oh my god and then get jared in the room <laughs> two of them just go off on a tan and i'm like oh jesus i was like i know jared so like i could just imagine the conversations that you guys are listening to um <laughs> Someone else wrote, so just so you know, Betty Pace, which is at Betty PA 507-58474, said, hi, Molly. I'm trying to think of a question that you can answer, but honestly, I um, can't. So good luck on the show. Um, and then she just said, have a very long time in Walker, Te Walker, Texas. Ranger, we love you so much. So added that in there. Um, oh, my God. That's so funny. I looked at that question. And this is this is me being Irish. I read it. I'm trying to think of a question I can ask that you will answer honestly. <laughs> but I can't. So and I was like, am I a liar? <laughs> Did you no. think I'm a liar? <laughs> it was the, the way well, the way you read it. it. The way that it was her. It, yeah, the way that she spaced it. I'm trying to think of a question that you can answer. And then she said, honestly, but can't. So good luck on. So it was more her. Isn't Science. that funny? <laughs> that so shows funny. you how little I think of myself. All right. <laughs> and let's see. You're lucky because you got no question from Jared. Because Jared usually sends a question. Um. Okay. Yeah. I will ask you two more. So this person, T. Ashley at Wayward Daughter sixty seven said, "I spoke with Mitch, um, three days ago at a convention. He talked about how much he loves working opposite you. Bonham and Abilene are my favorite characters on Walker. Question: Does she enjoy the emotional scenes with Mitch as a scene partner? Easy or difficult? It's easy. It is sometimes. Sometimes I go home after that. I'm like, God, that was so." am I working hard enough? I mean, there's, there's times that I'm like, am I doing the work? Because that was crazy easy. Mm. It's just really easy. I don't, I don't know what it is about us. I, it's just, it's really easy. That's nice to know that at a convention, he's talking about how much he loves you. <laughs> so yes, it's, it's very sweet. Yeah. He's telling that in front of <laughs> a million people. So it's mutual. Um, okay. So I will end with, her name is, I'm sorry if I'm saying this wrong. Ankita or Ankita. It's at underscore what's in a name seven. She had two questions for you. Um, I guess we, we could sort of answer both. She said, what did Molly uh, miss um, shooting with Jared? So what did Molly miss shooting with Jared? So I guess maybe like any scenes that you miss um, or like maybe miss being around Jared or anything you could tell us. And then she said, seems like this season, Abilene, even despite all the trauma has found peace and solace in her family so much that she's the pillar of the walkers. What's her take on it? And we kind of talked about that a little bit. So I guess basically what's maybe like <laughs> something that you miss about shooting with Jared since you guys are on break. And um, how do you feel that we all, including me, we talked about this earlier that you're like the pillar of the Walker family. Well, the thing about J <clears throat> Jared is like, yeah, there were tons of, he wasn't, a, first there was a lot of Iraq stuff and then he was in, you know, uh, he was kidnapped. And there was a lot of stuff, but he wasn't, he wasn't around the family. And I remember towards the end, I finally got to see him and I'm like, I just was like, I miss you so much. I, I, cause I'm, I'm, cause he, you know, he wasn't around. He, you know, he, all his scenes were encapsulated with um being a ranger or being kidnapped and um yeah it, it, i missed him a lot on set i i just missed him i missed his presence and 
getting to hang out with him. Um, Cause Jared's also really, I've gone to him when I feel bad about my acting or whatever. And he's just got, he's very wise. He's done probably more TV than, well, maybe not Mitch, but the rest of us put together. I mean, he's worked 20 straight years uh, and he's just very wise. So I just missed him. I missed him. Um, and then in terms of being a pillar, I, you know, I just think Abby eats a lot. <laughs> she internalizes a lot. And I, I, uh, heaven forbid we ever see it. We never see it externalized. <laughs> you know, I feel like it'll be a huge explosion. Everyone's, I feel like the guys are just going to run out. Cordell will be gone. Like Everyone's going to be like, get out of her way. Leave. <laughs> it'll just like explode one day. But it's, it's just nice because I think on most shows, we if there's a family dynamic, usually the man is like the pillar. So I think that's why it comes up so much. Like why I said it, someone had tweeted about it. It's just nice to see like a strong female pillar of a family represented on a show because that's realistic that's how I grew up my mom you know my dad was working my mom was the strong pillar she was the one in charge so it's like it's nice to see that on tv and it's nice to see someone like you that's so sweet and amazing and such a great actor play that so I think we all just enjoy well it. that's all Anna I mean that's Anna. that's Anna you know well, and, Santa and there's you in there <laughs> no I know but I mean you know what I mean it's yeah. it's like her vision of uh of the family and yeah, I mean, I just feel really, uh, this might, no, it's not my first time working with a female showrunner, but um, I, I feel really lucky that I have a female showrunner <laughs> because I think I could be relegated to a lot of uninteresting things. Yeah, I agree. Well, I want to end with, obviously you have a lot of fans because when I tweeted out, it went, crazy so not everyone gets to talk to you like i do and how'd your people <laughs> like me to talk to you over and over for all your projects so i want to give you the floor to um if there's anything you want to say for fans like me that have loved you forever we have followed you from show to show i mean i've watched your stuff since i even went back to like 1985 and watched some of your stuff back then i mean i've watched so much of your stuff i love you so if i could find something you're in it and i haven't seen it i will watch it um, but there are a lot of people that have followed you like from show to show and from all, like all different projects you've done and just really admire you and love you. They love you on the show. We're all hoping for another season. So is there anything that you want to say to them that don't get to talk to you and annoy you with crazy questions like me, um, that just love you? Well, I, I am a fan too. I, I love TV. I love TV. I've always loved TV. Um, uh, TV, I feel like, saved my life when I was, in, you know, growing up. I mean, it was just a real huge comfort. So I feel an affinity to people who love shows and other actors. I mean, because I know what it's like. So, and there's really no difference between us. <laughs> So when, you know, because I've met some people who are very nervous or whatever, and I, uh, and I, and I get it. I mean, I've been starstruck a lot. I've worked with people who I was very starstruck with and I had to get over it. And I, I, I just, just know that a lot of the people that you might admire on TV are also fans of other people and that we're all the same. There's no hierarchy. <laughs> Again, there's no hierarchy i do this because well a i'm lucky enough to do it but i really I, I love tv as much as any anybody out there and i i think it's a really great thing <laughs> i don't know and then is there anything like that you'd want to like tell the fans like for the ones that follow you and that love you that like don't get to say like oh my god i love you so much or like you know that follow your career wait what is there anything that you'd want to like tell fans that like follow your career that like just love you as a person versus just like acting, but like love you and they support like all your projects and kind of like follow everything. Well, thank you. I want to say thank you. I mean, I, I'm, you know, honored that anyone would pick me out. I mean, I'm a 
I, I'm a character actor. Who, you know what I mean? I mean, I feel like I'm, I, that anyone would pick me out to follow me or like me is, is, it's still unusual to me. I, I find that I don't, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> I mean, I, I really appreciate it. If someone's watching something because I'm in it, oh my God, that's, that's, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. I'm very, very honored, honored. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I want to thank you. Um, yes. Fans are watching because of you. They love this show because of you. Um, and it's just funny because anytime I interview an actor, you know, and I, and I get it. Cause if someone said it to me, it's like, um, there's a lot of deflection, I think with acting, cause there's a lot of like self-criticism, but people love you for you. They love you on the show. They love you on other shows. You have a lot of fans and I just am so excited for them to hear you talk about the show. And then hopefully we'll talk again for next season. And somehow I'm going to have to smuggle my way down there because now that I've talked to everybody, I need, I need, I definitely need to come down there, but, um, it's just been such a joy talking to you about this show in particular and hearing your process and how you work and how you do things. And I just find you like so fascinating and hopefully if anything, you walk away from this conversation feeling a little less of the half full, maybe a little, a little <laughs> more was added into the glass. Uh, cause you, we love you so much that you don't have to worry that you're doing anything wrong. Cause you're not, you're, you're perfect as you are. And you're an amazing actress and we just love you. Thank you, Monica. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us and we'll talk to you soon. And then if anyone's listening, watch Walker, all of the episodes that have previously aired are available on the CW app for free. So you can stream it. And then new episodes are Thursdays, 8 PM Eastern standard time. There's three left. So catch them and then just keep rewatching because we want another season. So just keep streaming and streaming and streaming. Um, so hopefully we get a new season. And thank you so much, Molly, thank for joining us. Thank you. And thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed listening to Molly Hagan talk all about Abilene Walker and break down everything from the season, including Gray Flag, and of course, what it's like to be the matriarch of the family. She even gave us some good details into the group chat and of course, the infamous guys and what they've been doing in between takes. So hope you guys enjoyed listening to all of her stories. Make sure that you check out the new episodes of Walker that are left to air. They air Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the CW. And if you're behind, do not worry. You could watch all of the episodes available to stream on the CW app for free. So make sure you go and head over there so you're all caught up for the finale. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you're updated on all of our latest podcasts and head over to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe so you're updated on all of our video content. Uh -huh.